Welcome to the OSR's podcast where we talk about RuneScape-related things with RuneScape-related content creators. I am Mitt Metcalf, one of your hosts, followed by... What's going on, guys? Rex, as always. It's me, Voiceco. And uh, today we have a very special guest, my good friends that I just saw at RuneFest last weekend, hey. Mr. Kemp Q. How's it going, man? Hello, doing very well. Thank you guys for having me on. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk to, talk with you guys. Hell yeah, man. Hey. Hell yeah, I'm excited. Dude, I, I've honestly, like, we met at RuneFest. We've met each other now. How many times have we met each other, Kemp? Like, uh, unfortunately, only three times, unfortunately. That's a lot so of times, Has it man. just been at RuneFest? Yeah, yeah, just RuneFest. Oh, wait, maybe. Damn. Yeah, just RuneFest. No dead mans, unfortunately. But, no. Yeah. Oh, I'm thinking of Solo Mission, because Solo Mission snuck his way into, like, Dude, the how can you mix him up with Solo Mission? Leicester. One's got I a know, neck. Right? Uh, no, we I know, right? We are both quite gaunt and white. <laughs> I would say they're, they're they're both awesome. a lot of time indoors. Dude, they're both fucking <laughs> awesome. But yeah, no, that's awesome, man. I know at RuneFest this time around, I was talking with you and we were talking about the podcast and I was like, you've been on. And you were like, no. And I was like, what? I was like, how have you not been on the podcast, man? So it's good to finally have you. Hell yeah, dude. I'm, I'm a very opinionated um, player, so I look forward to offering uh, what I have to offer. Maybe it'll be you know valuable. Maybe it won't be, but... I guess we'll just have to see. And yeah, uh, yeah I look forward to like talking with you guys about it because you guys have obviously some very um like good opinions and I'd be interested oh, like to see where we differ. Good in opinions. We got right. it. Sounds like we're gonna have some a debate opinions. battle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but before we get into the runescape related stuff, we start out with a QA so our guests can uh, know you more. And Camp, you went to TwitchCon, remember? We hung out at the after party. Yes, yes, I do. I think it was uh, you, me, and Framed for a little bit. Now I took. Mm-hmm. There was. Uh, yeah. Was there sorry, more? Go ahead. No. Was there more people that were? Uh, I think one of your pals as well. I don't know his name. Uh. uh oh, it wasn't Lord. Rice Cup. Was no. It? No. <laughs> no. 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 I only, I only went this year. So no. Rice Cup always goes to RuneFest, and I convinced him to go to TwitchCon. And I want to ask him, what do you like more, RuneFest or TwitchCon? Ooh, it's got to be hands down RuneFest right. for sure. Is it because you know more people <laughs> there? Yeah, and just like I'm, I play RuneScape like freaking twelve hours a day. So okay, uh, it's just it's just my environment, you know. It's just my territory. All right. So um, well, rise. Yeah, just getting to know like all the people there. It's really rise. Good. Do you agree with Camp? Is RuneFest better? Don't you fucking Ooh, say for it. different reasons. Don't you fucking say it. I took you around reasons. every night. I gave you my heart, you little uh, shit. Okay, no, no. Like, um, so the problem with Rufus is that um, it, the venue is in a place that's pretty remote. So, like, if you want to go somewhere to hang out, it's kind of hard to do that. True. Whereas in TwitchCon, to be honest, you only spend two hours at the con and then you spend the rest of the day out, outside of it. But it's it's fine because Cali has a lot of places to hang out. You think if the same people went to RuneFest, but just to TwitchCon, yeah. it'd probably just be way better than just. But yeah, I, I do like RuneFest more probably for like just Ooh. talking to more people. Bruh. But RuneFest, I like. I mean, TwitchCon, I like more for hanging out, like going outside and hanging out. I gotta try to go to RuneFest one year. I really do. Yo, next year, bro. I'm going mm. next year, dude. Everyone's I, going next year. Do you think that I would actually? Because the only reason I want to go to TwitchCon is to see you guys. Like to be completely oh, yeah. honest, yeah. that is literally it. So would I enjoy Twitch? Yeah, Rexy. Because I don't watch yeah, any would. streamers like ever. Rexy, you went to you Amsterdam, know? right? Remember you told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're having TwitchCon at Amsterdam this year, as well. Oh, like, awesome! So okay. I don't. Oh. Nah, dude, just go to the one. I would... go to. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, it's like three point five k to go to the TwitchCon though. Oh fuck that, dude! Nah. Yeah, really? It's, it's like more. Yeah, because the Airbnbs around there are just like all booked. There's another event that's happening. I don't know what it's called. Yeah, but no, it's gonna be extortionate yeah. to Dude, go to Amsterdam. Rexy says he likes bro. to yeah. hostel it up, bro. What do you mean? We'll just be chilling, forty <laughs> beds, one mind. room. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you go to TwitchCon, <laughs> just plan it out early at Cali. The one in Cali is probably the best. Rexy, one. okay, you would have a blast if you went with us. I you mean, would have had a blast, man. Promise. Dude, I hmm. really want to go. The only thing that I would like to be sorted, like. Some sort of Airbnb, like if yeah, we yeah. can sort it as a group beforehand, yeah. I'm in a hundred. Yeah, that's mandatory. We're getting that's a houseboat, we bitch. It's gonna be great. <laughs> yeah. We can't but, live in the streets. Dude, I get, I get seasick, man. So uh, okay, yeah. we might, <laughs> we might get like a house yeah. on the beach, like a couple feet away from the convention. We'll see. There's a lot of places open right now, so. Uh, but let's get back but to yeah. camp. Yeah, I'm trying to go to RuneFest next year, though. Just want to see the that. people's opinions about TwitchCon versus RuneFest. <laughs> 
All right. Who's asking next? Rixie should ask next. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys didn't ask him. Oh, you asked him if you preferred Twitch or RuneFest. Did he even answer before you guys like said yeah, RuneFest? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Where's right. your brain then? <laughs> I, I'm just going to hit him with a classic. Uh, Ken, when did you first hear of and begin playing RuneScape? <laughs> uh, Every damn time. <laughs> similar to... Actually, I saw someone reply to uh, Torvesta's recent tweet about that. This very same question. Uh, some guy replied to Torvesta's tweet like, my brother needed a slave to mine ore for him. <laughs> yeah. That was Michael... Um, Michael RS, if you guys know that guy, good friend yeah, of mine. Yeah, 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 I know Michael. Yeah, and I got <laughs> into RuneScape pretty much the exact same way. My older brother, he's older by like five years or something. He's he's really smart, pretty conniving, um, and he was getting in. He was like mining and smithing all the time, and he uh, was at first hiding the RuneScape screen from all his siblings and stuff. He didn't want anybody to know what he was up to there. Uh, but finally, he had an idea. And he started uh, enslaving all of his younger siblings to do <laughs> the mining for him. Because, you know, smithing and smel smelting and smithing is a lot more fun than the doing the mining. So we were doing all the mining for him. And then he was smithing it and be like, oh, yeah, guys, we're making so much money. He would just give us a small cut. And then, <laughs> yeah, yeah so. just... that's how I got into RuneScape. And I am the only, like, literally my entire family played RuneScape back then. I have five Dude, siblings. That's sick. Damn. <laughs> and, uh, that's sick. And we played it for like a summer all together, and then it kind of dwindled to just the boys playing it. And, um, and it was just, now it's just me. Uh, 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 now it's so just me. Bring them back <laughs> for group iron, right? right dude. That would be oh, the family series. Make them your slaves. <laughs> so pretty much, he was your scaling pimp in a way, you know. I get, in a way, yeah. I guess Did you, he yeah. put violence on you if you didn't mind? <laughs> He's just sitting there like. Mm. Oh. Yeah, I uh, probably. He was a good older brother. Okay. Yo, okay. honestly, <clears throat> that definitely happened so much because, like, my friends would be like, "Can I do anything for you so I can get some money?" I'm like, "Yeah, mind me some clay, you know, like just random shit." Oh, so back in the day when G wasn't out, good days. What, yeah. what year was that camp that you started playing? Uh, two thousand summer of twenty two thousand five. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's around the same time I got into the game. Yeah. Well. I just so remember I those zombie heads uh, yeah. at Halloween. Well, those were so cool. I was like, oh my god, that's so cool. I remember those days. <clears throat> those are good days, man. I miss those. Uh, out of all the content that you've made, what is your favorite? And I'll tell you my favorite from you, Kemp, is uh, obviously the low HP rushing Iron Man. The 11, okay. 10 HP. I've seen a few of those 10 HP. Especially when we got that Dragon Warhammer. I was up on that video. Oh my lord, I was Hell keeping up, but yeah. when that video came out and you just two hit somebody with a barrage and a hammer spec, uh -huh. oh my lord, my erection's still kind of there, just a little bit. Oh, uh -huh. shit. <laughs> oh shit, well I'm glad I could get that blood flow for you. <laughs> God <damn it. laughs> but yeah, I'm thinking, in terms of like favorite video I've ever produced, it might have to be um, full obsidian PKing on dead man mode. Because when full obby came out, the very next dead man mode ha that ha was going to happen, I was like, oh, well, I could do this. I could be the first one to ever get full obby and just completely annihilate everybody because, you know, people yeah. don't, didn't really know about the set effect and all that. And um, that was a really interesting video Dude, I made. Do you remember that we got you at the house portal for that obsidian set? Yeah. Uh, you and, uh, <laughs> who, it was, who's it that was other me, guy? Dude, it was Boom me, Epic Kill. Boom Epic Kill on Big Bicep. And Boom Epic Kill got the kill on you. Like we're no longer like mates or anything that was like back that. When I remember were frenzies. Yeah. Yeah, I remember he was. We were in like a team speak, and he was like, "Oh, I can ask him for like two hundred and fifty mil old school RuneScape for the setback." And I was like, "Come on, dude!" I was like, "Just give it to him." <laughs> I, remember I was like, that. "Really?" I was like, "Fuck, man, that's so much money." I was like, "He's trying to make content." I was like, "Nah, give it to him for lower." And I think, how much did you pay for it back? <laughs> My in the dude, uh, <laughs> I, I like swap. It, that's when swapping was allowed. Just saying. Uh, I think I gave him. <laughs> like probably 100 mil or something i don't know which is still like an insane amount of money man Fucking yeah nuts. because the first time you got away because you got into that little apron store and you went inside the door <laughs> and we were just like herp to derp how do we get in and we just stood there like fuck man he's so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck me and then the second time i can't remember how we got you i watched all those videos man you're just hitting these random nostalgia memories for me a couple years back <laughs> back when oh yeah dead man mode was actually pretty hyped to watch and I saw your yeah. ass in full city, and I clicked that vid so fast. Oh my god! Yeah, Those are good that that was fun. Those were the good days. I remember I caught a guy outside that portal. He was like rank 
he was definitely top five Slayer. I got him for like Black Mask and a yeah, Cannon, like loads of shit. That was Dead when Man. Demo Mode was fun. Dude, Dead Man is so fun. I just, I want them to bring it back so bad. I wish there was a reason to play seasonals, you know. Mm. Um, but yeah, because unfortunately, if you die in the tournament, then you just, your tournament's over. So or, that is if you're scold. So yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, probably like one of, well, definitely another one of my videos that's up there is like, the tenny, the video where I got the granite mall, for sure. Oh, I remember that. Solace. That was a grind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's my most popular video. It has um, upwards of five hundred thousand views now. So. Damn. God. Yeah. Damn, bro. How many videos on RuneScape do you think even reach the point of five hundred thousand? Other than settled. Um. <laughs> there are probably the older ones. At least a hundred, I'd say, that have hit that milestone. And then, like maybe a yeah. couple that are at a mill. Right. I wish we could break oh, yeah. that more often in, as a community. Dude, I, I yeah, recently hit like, my first 1 million views on a video. You have like a 1 million viewed man. video? Fuck. Yeah, I do. Nice, dude. I do. Let me see. Yeah, it was uploaded two years ago. Right. How I made a bond in one day in free to play. Oh, one of those yeah. videos. Of course. <laughs> no, of course. Oh, I think Torvesta right. framed like 10 other people. Yeah. Same video. But, dude, I've got, <laughs> I've got three videos including that. That have over five hundred thousand. So yeah, that's crazy. That's insane. Yeah, money making is just huge because, like, it, you know, you know who watches the videos? It's mostly casual players. It's mm -hmm. actually not the sweaty players because those are still oh, yeah. huge. Money minority, making you know? guys on RuneScape are kind of like the unboxing videos of uh, YouTube, you know, for kids. You know, like they just open some <laughs> shit up well, and like, they watch that shit. I mean, like, it's the same reason like Minecraft and like uh, Roblox gets millions of views on the daily. It's because it. Hey, I don't appreciate my videos being compared <laughs> to <laughs> Roblox, Fortnite, and whatever the fuck else you nah, said. No, I'm saying. I'm Get saying, out of here. I'm saying the reason why it's so hard for no, RuneScape play, videos play. though to get like that much traction is because there's not enough kids that play this game. It's all us old ass people that just come back for like you know our fifth time playing this game. So yeah. that that's the biggest issue is that we cannot get a kid audience into our game. So you're saying we got to be more yeah. kid friendly if we mm. want views. How do you think we go about that? Well, I mean, no, the game needs to be. Do we dress up like Spider Man like that weird shit with Elsa Dude, and get somebody pregnant? It, it's. It's quite simple, really. You just got to look at what, like, the average player lacks and wants the most in the game. And I'd say they want to have fun, so PK is a very good thing. All people want to have money. Like, that's the thing, man. Like, for me, I was very yeah. money-driven on RuneScape up until a couple years ago when I realized, shit, I've got so much money, I don't know what to fucking do with it. Do you know what I mean? So everyone wants money, everyone wants to be rich, everyone wants items, and everyone wants mm. to have fun. So it's like PK and money making. If you want to get views and apply to a big audience, that's probably the best. Yeah, way. no, but that, I'm not saying that's really the issue. It's really the issue of the RuneScape player base just not having enough kids that want to play this game. Because if there's enough, if it was like, oh, yeah, kids know, don't play Minecraft or, or, you know, or any of those, it'd be easy. Our videos would get anybody, anybody's videos would get so much more views because there's a bigger audience. Our audience is rather limited to like I us think, and like the uh, older generation. So. Yeah. But I think the people that cater to the younger people, like they obviously hate themselves, earn those younger people's <laughs> viewership. And yeah. uh, as a result, maybe those younger people will like watch more of like play more and watch more videos i think a lot of people like that make things really easy to understand and are just kind of more like casual players do really well an example of that is sir pugger like he's he's like a casual player i'd say but he just yeah. has an amazing presentation and because he's a casual player he doesn't like get into the real nitty-gritty like super detailed yeah, mechanics and he, yeah. he yeah so like me like showing off some mechanic in one of my videos like oh yeah this is so cool like a casual player has no concept. Yeah, they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, just like they don't know. Talking. It's me assuming that people know everything about this thing so that they can, I can you know, jump. I yeah. completely yeah. agree. Yeah. It feels like we live RuneScape day to day. So it's almost like the RuneScape information should be common sense, but it shouldn't be. We're yeah. just fat fucking nerds, you know? You yeah. don't know about Nightmare Zone, <laughs> or you don't know about this? And I'm like, every time it's like, how do I train my attack on my peer? I'm like, dude, you know what rock crabs are, right? What? What are those? It's like the basic exactly. information. Sand crabs. You mean sand crabs. Any huh? of the Come crabs, on. yeah. Just, yeah. 
it's it's kind of sad you know we have this weird runescape ego where we think people should know when they really just yeah. are trying to play a game we <laughs> like to be honest our, our community is pretty exclusive in a way because like we don't because like i haven't really felt the presence of a kid playing this game in a long do time do you search for like, kids when you play games or have <laughs> I don't. I'm just saying. No, 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 no. You I'm just come here, kitties. Kid. No, 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 no. What like, the like, fuck? Like, like real 2018. Because, because, like, back when the game was, like, at its biggest, obviously, most of us were kids, right? Like, now it, it's not the same. We just don't have that, like, kind of, like, innocent, no, I get what you're you know, playthrough anymore, dude. We don't have yeah. that. You know what? I, I don't know. I'm at Edgeville like, Bank right now. I see a lot of noobs. Open up a CC. Yeah, but, like, they're kiddies. usually returning players or, like, they're, like, older, way older that, players. That's a really good point, man. Like, how do you think that Jagex could go about getting more that's children saying, to dude. play the game? It would be very difficult because the graphics Crazy. are We're super already rapid. there. They're adding AGS special attacks with animations, dude. We got them. <laughs> but for teenagers, we but got that's, them, teenagers, dude. that's the problem. Ma maybe that honestly isn't that bad of a thing. <laughs> no, I'm actually excited for that. It's just memeable. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm buying to it. To be honest, I think... I think them creating new animations is actually really important to the game. Like, well, maybe I'm biased Uniqueness, because yeah. I have this weird fetish for that kind of thing. Like, I love new animations in RuneScape. I just think they look so cool and, like, different. I wish they would add more, but they keep recycling, like, the same ones for I, every new I activity, picture which is like this, a little okay. disappointing. Say, like, RuneScape yeah. PvP is a boat, and it's got, like, a shit ton of holes and, like, planks and stuff. And they're like, all right, I know how to do it. And they just put like a new flag on it that's kind of pretty. And they're like, all right, set sail. And you just see that shit slowly sinking into the water. That's what the spec animations are for an update. I'm excited for it, but it's definitely not the thing we need. But it's going to be cool either way. <laughs> well, I, I would attribute the, the flag that was added to the boat to the community. Like the community put that there because they voted in literally nothing else except for that <laughs> new you're animation. You're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. So it's, the, it's really the community that like... I don't know. It, it's not like they need fixing or anything. like. Yeah. Really, it's, it's kind of Dude, a weird the, thing to say. Like the anchor on that ship should just be like Reddit and Twitter, <laughs> just dragging it down. Very true. Just sinking it down. Okay, let's all go over our opinions on why we think that is. Mine is that there's a mindset about the wilderness, and we talked about this before. Like back in the day, when you entered the wild, was your heart not like beating? You know, and you're scared, yeah, yeah. and you don't want to lose your air yeah, staff. You were also younger back then too. I know, uh -huh. but now that we're older, everyone thinks that going in the wild doesn't necessarily mean death. They just want to go it there doesn't. to progress. Yeah. They don't think mm -hmm. risk versus reward. They just think reward. And if someone gets in the way of that, it's their yeah. fault. Not, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, they don't care about the wilderness etiquette anymore, bro. They're just like, oh, I gotta go there do my slayer test or like really? do my scroll. It's like enough, y'all bitches better PK me. It's scary for a reason, you know. That's it should yeah. get your heart racing. You should be scared to enter it. You yeah. should have to bring gear and food and supplies to tank and not go butt naked with graceful and get angry, you know. Yeah, but mm. well, yeah, no, the mentality is uh, that 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 doesn't work for older people because we're all always like everything should be about uh, me, you know. Like yeah, about the, I, you know, I them personally themselves. don't understand that. Any other game that has a PvP zone, I'm never like, why did you kill me? I'm like, fuck me, Dude. you slammed my ass, you know. Do, do you know? What I think like the best update Jagex could put into the game that I would love so Taking much away is shields. if they change. <laughs> Change, change the death mechanic back to like if you die your items instantly spawn on the floor for everyone there and i would lose bank as well but i'd love to see that you think back. yeah because they be catered them right to just always yeah. getting their shit back dude i would literally yeah, yeah, just hop sure. worlds i would hop worlds at like armadillo and bosses and i reckon i could make a bill in a week just looting people 100 <laughs> percent. it'd be fucking awesome Go to DKs and crash someone and Easily. make them get hit by. I mean, uh, lower prime supreme. to them. That's how people those get videos are back fucked in back in the day, where terrible. you lure the mage over. And just oh like, god, I had to do that a few times because people try to crash. And my then house. they'd hashtag Isn't... their clan like assholes. It's just a fucking well, word. Yeah. It's yeah, really no, interesting. It's, it has it? its drawbacks. Like well, the, the thing game... is, the punishment. Uh, what you're trying to say is the punishment in this game in general has gone downhill. There is none. It's what pretty much. There, there isn't really a punishment, is there? Yeah, the only place that feels punishing is being in the wilderness, and that's why people complain but about the dual it, arena. Like, yeah, like the dual arena is like self punishment. That's you do you did it onto yourself. More self inflicted. Like. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's just more like you're you're impatient and you want to make a lot of money, and then you. It's like it. you've got a pain <laughs> fetish, man. I don't think it, that place. I don't know. I disagree in the context of what we're talking about, which is like, if you're going and doing bandos or something, how how is well, okay, you that, making a mistake a at different. bandos a self-inflicted? Yeah. You know, it's just like, 
sure there's high you know high risk high reward yeah yeah but people are bound to make mistakes while they're doing pvm and you know die it's like i think those are yeah I but, mean, um, yeah, I guess you can say it's similar, but... I mean, I'd be pretty frightened no, 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 to lose no, my shit on my Iron Man if I was okay. bossing, but... Yeah. Dude, my, my counter to back that... back then, like, think about this way, right? Hold on, uh, give me a second. Like, back then, think about this way. When you PVM'd, right, back then, you didn't bring everything. You will only bring... If you were smart, you will only bring the things you were willing to risk. If you were yeah. dumb, you would bring a lot of things. And then if you die, you'll be like, oh no, I lost this too? Like, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah, Lesson learned. That's exactly yeah. what I was about to yeah. say, by the way. Oh, okay, like, yeah, yeah. That's Continue it right there. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, Dual Arena is a little different because you're like, you can completely decide how much you want to put in and, like, you know, stake with the people and do that. That's it. But yeah, it's it's similar, but like PVMing and staking, you know, there's there's definitely a big. Yeah. And, and I guess an extension yeah. to what you're saying is like, it's very similar with the Dual Arena. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have gone and staked. All my, you know, yeah. Dual out. Arena is more of like a compulsive thing, you know. Whereas PVM is like, you know, it's more Dude, just like yeah. everybody does it. You make right. a mistake. Yeah. I, I've just thought of something, and it's not necessarily a good thing, but it would definitely make people be punished more for dying, right? And I'm getting this because recently, in the last few years, they changed the penalty for speeding here in the UK. So it used to be if you sped in the UK, you would get like a 250 pound fine, you'd pay it, right? And like to some people, that's a lot of money. And then to some people that are filthy rich, it's just like, yeah, take my pocket change. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to speed some more, right? Like, But they changed it, so they take a percentage of your earnings. Imagine <laughs> if Jagex made it so that when you die, instead of paying like 100k at Vorkaf or whatever, you had to pay like a percentage of your bank wealth didn't, to get your items. Yeah, we didn't, back. We, uh, <laughs> this didn't frame before, tweet though, that? Because like, yeah, that's really sure. smart, personally. Yeah, I mean, it, it, well, I think that's the most sensible because, or else you're gonna promote like DDoSing again and and whatnot. Because like the only way is either you penalize people for like with GP, because like you can't make items drop on the ground anymore. Because you do that, people will start DDoSing yeah, again. People are. Yeah, so like like the GP things like really the only solution. <laughs> but but do you know uh, what yeah, the the yeah. only argument I have about that is like. It's fucking bullshit, dude. I'm not gonna lie. We're talking about a company that is worth millions, right? But you don't hear about people on Blizzard dying in raids because the fucking server got. Yeah, DDoS. speaking about Blizzard, it's now. just not a thing, right? Why is it a thing? Why is the protection against DDoSing for Jagex like just? Well, not I mean, I don't think Blizzard. There's much incentive to DDoS. Wow, because if you kill someone because of DDoS, you, you don't you you DDoS. Wow, shit. the Chinese government's gonna kill your ass, yeah. right? <laughs> I, mean, like, so like, I don't think I don't think it's the same because oh it's like if you kill someone in WoW with a DDoS, what do you get? Nothing. Whereas if, if back then if you DDoS someone and they died, you pick up their shit, right? But I, I'm just saying I, I'm not saying specifically like for I think the amount of people that DDoS are DDoS. I'm just saying like those servers don't get DDoSed, and it's the same for pretty much every other game. I, I can't think of a single game apart from RuneScape where it's like the server can get can get taken offline. Like what? Yeah, the no. Fuck, what I'm dude? saying is, there's not much incentive for people to DDoS. Wow. Whereas there was, there was a lot of incentive for people to DDoS. You know, small tangent, by what? the way, because it's pretty yeah. big at the moment. You guys heard about the Blizzard drama, right? Oh yeah. I, I got a little shit. bit caught up on it this morning. It's I don't really know what happened. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, I'll explain it just to uh, the community and the viewers. And Cam, do you know about this or? I don't know. No, okay, so no. Blizzard, right. it's, it's pretty bad. huge gaming company, right? Absolutely destroys RuneScape in every way, except the we're not suck. sucking China's Dongarino. Uh, pretty much this guy won a bunch of tournaments, and he was promised cash prize, and he was getting interviewed. And sorry if you can hear that. They're working on the fence back there. I don't know if that's audible. No, that's all good. You're good. Okay. Jeez, it's getting louder. That is horrible timing. <laughs> all right, all right, don't, don't bring it up now. Okay, I no, hear I'm here. I'm here, bro. I got this. So he won a bunch of tourney, and he's on an interview. And uh, he feels the need to shout out his brethren who are fighting for their freedom in Hong Kong, right? Well, when he says uh, free Hong Kong on the interview, Blizzard shuts him down, takes away his yearly prize money, and then bans him, right? Pretty much oh, taking dear. away his freedom of speech. Wait. What what did he do exactly? What what he, did he, he say? Said, fight free, fight like fight for Hong Kong's freedom. Like, yeah, they're just fighting yeah. for their freedom over there. So he pretty much just was trying to raise a political statement, right? But um, <clears throat> apparently, Blizzard sided with China and took away his freedom of speech, so it didn't negatively affect Blizzard in that way. And everyone's up in arms, and now they're deleting their accounts. And so many people are deleting Blizzard accounts, they actually had to put their authenticators up for their accounts, so they can't delete them. Uh, 
I mean, these tweets online are getting 50, 100K retweets off just random protests. They're, it's it's a pretty big thing. They're losing stock uh, money. Uh, yeah, yeah. Dude, uh, it, it's yeah, really yeah. funny that this has happened because at RuneFest, I was talking to uh, Ditter Bitter, and he was saying he lives in Hong Kong. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he's, he, he said, like, outside of his door, outside of his apartment, like, just down the road, he said it's a literal war zone. Like it's a fucking war zone, like ten meters. Uh, from okay, he's he's exaggerating a little bit, but, but he he, he, he he is a bit of a yeah dit or shit. He likes to exaggerate, but, yeah, but yeah. it's pretty. I, I no, mean, they're um, fighting. I mean, I know so. I know a lot about it. You know what I mean? Like I I lived in China. I was born there. Like you know, I I keep I keep updated on all that stuff. Like the Hong Kong protest is something that's been going on for like a year plus now. It's just people don't really talk about it as much. But now it's kind of like gone to the point where. The players are also, you know, what I mean, online are also, you know, trying to make it aware that it's happening. Mm. But yeah, it's like a big political international thing that's happening for a long time, and it's kind of like slowly escalating. Because now you you've brought like the gaming community and like the NBA community and all those different, you know, franchises and stuff and and uh, industries into it. Pretty much, people are like taking notice people. now, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. A lot more because like it used to be just like in the news and people don't often watch and read the news but now you have a person that is connected to twitch you know and all those online things and they're and like they're actually using that platform to raise yeah. awareness i it's love that that's it's so good man i mm-hmm. like something i was thinking about yesterday literally yesterday i was watching you know you get those videos on youtube that are like how, how items are made and stuff, and it show you how like ice cream is produced in a factory. You're blah, there, blah, you're blah. there, audience, aren't you? You're there. <laughs> how dude, it's made? Well, hey, listen, man, I, <laughs> you're their target dude, audience, been, bro. <laughs> dude, I, I've been camping Nightmare Zone now for a week, and I'm watching everything and anything. Ooh, like Tootsie rules. Yo, check out it how made, it's made. <laughs> it, it made me think. Uh, for some reason, I got to like the full process of thinking about the sun. Okay, I don't know if you have the sun in America, but here in the UK, it's like one of the biggest old school newspapers oh okay right? i thought you're talking and, about uh, never mind okay no so one of the videos i was watching was like an old video of like berlin back in like the 1900s and it was people on the tram with like their newspapers and it was really interesting because i was looking at it and i was thinking damn i was like yeah you know when you think about it like in terms of media it's changed so much like you used to get all of your information from the sun whereas now everyone sit, sits on the tram or the train and they're reading on their phones you know like there's no need to buy a newspaper right and I love that. I'm not going to lie because like they had their time in the spotlight. The sun were notorious for just being like a a garbage fucking newspaper that posted the most trashy stuff that applied to the biggest audience of retards that wanted to buy it because (laughs) they cared about stuff that meant nothing, but they would never like actually cover something significant. Right. And it's like, I've just looked up right now their YouTube channel, which is probably one of their main sources of getting their media out now. And they have 348,000 subscribers. And it's like, they are known in the UK by every fucking person. Like if you ask somebody in the UK, do you know who The Sun is, the newspaper? Everybody's going to say yes. Maybe one out of two wouldn't or whatever. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of people know who they it's are. It's great. And now look at them. Yeah. The, now look at them. Dude, the media is yeah, falling. It's beautiful. People can get their info any other way other than a newspaper. And it's just so much Good. better. Yeah. yeah. And the, going back to the guy that's been penalized for saying free hong kong or fight for their freedom like fuck man but i can understand that he said something really racist and like them banning him but something like as small as that which there's no negativity towards at all it's just purely positive well, it, it's negative for up. them it's negative for them because china is very aggressive any anytime someone talks mac about them they will punish them. So Blizzard. Is scary how, how was that? How was that smart? The, no, the, but this is what well, this is what Blizzard. Well, the thing is, is Rakes, you remember we're Blizzard. talking about China, and you're like, well, no, they're cool. They might be communists, but they're they're not cool. They're <laughs> yeah, no, they're, they're really, really shitty with international <laughs> like defamation. Yeah. So like Blizzard scare financially because um, if they support it, then then what what China would do is all right, we're gonna cut off WoW for, in China. And that is like their biggest player base. So if they cut that off, they lose a lot of money. You know? Have Blizzard. they actually threatened that? Oh yeah, they would because they've done that so with they NBA, would do is they did they that would, Well, then well. fucking say goodbye. <laughs> they'd Dude, cancel it shit, and then man. they'd make their own yeah. copywritten version of WoW. Yeah, no, they're pretty aggressive, they bro. Yeah, they'll just cancel. Well, the thing it, is, right? I mean, you could counter pressure, right? But the thing is, China's like so like. Dude, so this is it. they're the so ne- pressuring everything man. that they're like, oh shit, I'm so sorry. No. The- 
we're the gonna ban the guy. War, you know, the next world war, war that we're gonna have is yeah. gonna be is gonna be because of the internet, a hundred percent. Like yeah. this is how it begins because everyone loves video games, and I would jump on that bandwagon, man. I didn't play fucking well, but I know for a fact that you should not be penalized for saying something such as help Hong Kong be free Dude, or whatever. I, I know. Yeah, what I mean, fuck? now, you know. now we should probably get back into RuneScape. I just yeah. wanted to say that's a pretty big issue going on right now, and WoW is a dumpster fire, and RuneScape should be on all fronts advertising RuneScape right now to try to yeah. get that viewer base. Just saying. We accept refugees. For real. Well, refugees. Because everyone's <laughs> quitting. So, um, But let's talk <laughs> about RuneFest. Camp Q, did you enjoy this year's RuneFest? Oh, my lord. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. What it was great talking to everybody, as always. Um, yeah, it was just a good... Uh, that's why I go to RuneFest. That's why... I, that's, like, what I enjoy most about events or going places, um, whether it be in traveling or just, like, you know, events like RuneFest. It's just the people, really. What was the that I'm interested in? most memorable part this year of RuneFest? Some of the uh, memorable. Group Iron Man announcement. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I was sitting right next to you, Tom, when it was announced. Yeah, we were, man. And yeah, I yeah. wasn't even hyped for that update and knew it was coming. But like hearing about it, I've been talking about it with friends of mine. I'm probably gonna do Group Iron Man. It sounds yeah. fucking every consecrator is gonna do Group Iron Man. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... for mint. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna have to troll. Oh, really? I'll make like a group Iron Man woodcutting only one episode. Just one, just one tree <laughs> getting fucked up by four dudes. That's it. Uh, <laughs> what was I gonna say? Um, so I was watching RuneFest on well the fucking Twitch channel, and I, so Rakesy doesn't remember this. Uh, I was wondering if you did. Somebody was getting an award for a golden gnome, and I don't know who it was. Uh, sorry if you're watching the podcast. I just I don't know. And he's like, "All right, I just want to thank every J mod for this opportunity." And he just goes and says, "Except for my Jed." And then you'll just slowly see oh, him be in Zuhar. 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 Did he get escorted out? Was that a thing? Or Oh, no. He, it was no. Zuhar. If you would have said his name, he was on the stage with me later on. Okay. Or on these games. I didn't know he did that, though. That was I, I was laughing because it, if you ever saw The Office, they have these funny pan zooms where it's just like they show an event and then they kind of show the aftermath of it. And they did that <laughs> perfectly <laughs> accidentally. So they just show him and the whole chest like, oh, he's getting kicked off. And, and it's crowd. like, boom, and it shows Mod Mark. And then it just slowly pans to him walking out of the auditorium with some dude. Looked like he got escorted <laughs> so far. Uh oh. <laughs> so I was wondering. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I don't, I'm I don't a, think so. I have a big question for you guys, everyone. So, all right, Group Iron Man, you know, some of y'all predicted it, but what were some things that you were hoping that they would announce that they that didn't get announced? Like the idea Rage 3. Uh, for me, it's Rage 3. DC2 yeah. and Rage 3. DC2? Desert, DT. Desert Cog? No, yeah, Desert, Desert Treasure, Treasure 2. Yeah. Oh, DT, yeah. Uh, I was thinking they would put Rage 3 locked behind Desert Treasure 2 or something like that. Oh, that'd be sick, dude. Yeah. Two birds in one Yo, How many raids do you people need to be happy? All right? It's been like two years. <laughs> Fuck it It's up. been a while. You got man. beat her Yo, blood. Insert Titanic. Yo, insert Titanic grandma. It's been 84 years. Dude, how like, many so do you need, yeah. bro? We're going to be like well, in 10 years, raid 7 coming out. There's just like a raid in every city. You got oh, the Lumbridge man. raid area and shit. Two years, bro. bro. That's, I behind think it's Dead fine. Man, it is the most. Actually, no. Probably not even behind Dead Man. It is the most hyped content on. On Twitch, like new, you incredibly know difficult is. stuff. So Bodhi had like 30k viewers when Raids 2 first came out, which is insane for a yeah. single individual to get. Never mind, like you know, on the old school stream itself. Yeah. Uh, and when Inferno came out, that was obviously oh, insane that as well. Was insane, you, dude. you still see in those YouTube compilations of the best Twitch clips of all time. You know those these YouTube ones that oh, yeah, float yeah. around. Um, those have like millions and millions of views. And Wooks's first. Uh, Zuck KC is in those compilations alongside, you know, huge streamers like Ninja and Pokimane and all that stuff. I'm not so, saying it's not hype. I'm just saying, when is it going to, you know, are we just going to always get another set of bosses for a new year every year? It seems like. I well, wish. I mean, Raids I, is every two years right now. So I don't know, man. I mean, I'm down. I'm not going to vote no against it, obviously. I want people to. So, what, to do you, enjoy what would you it, like, man? Oh, you want? <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, uh, I think Torvesta said it perfectly. It's like, what do you want to add? No, what do you want to take away? Right, the third-party clients that are overpowered, uh, balance more of the wilderness. Pretty much, if you try to PK in the wild and you don't have a clan, even if you do have a clan, you could still splash twenty times on really shitty gear. They could uh, <clears throat> box a hobgoblin for ten years with a Din's bulwark and talk shit. 
all of these make the wilderness not what I remember back in the day. I don't know. I'm just looking for some updates to make me enjoy it again. Because sitting at the rev entrance yeah. for like five hours a night, eh, you know, it's all right, I guess. They're just... Yeah, Yeah. now the problem with the wilderness, I mean, we've talked about this time and time again. We just never came up with a good solution other than just to make P uh, PvP popular other, other in other places, like with an ELO system and like combat brackets and stuff like well, that. Well, all right? you got to do is take but the J mods and have them PK deep wildy for like an hour every day, right? Just take them out, have them experience what it's like to try to hunt PVMers or hunt other PKers and get hit by single clans. So they kind of feel what the wilderness is like nowadays right that's all you got to do so they just kind of oh, yeah understand. yeah remember we remember we talked about how like we can isolate the wilderness to like four or five worlds or something remember that talk oh, that was i think that was something we kind of agreed on um because that way you can make it easier to find people that was yeah. that was like the big thing i, I, I kind of disagree with taking the j mods out and like putting them in the wilderness having them go hunt people because it's like even very experienced pkers mm -hmm. that do that every day what they say, what they keep saying is fix PvP. You know, like a lot of them, a lot of people just say fix PvP without giving any specific suggestions. And that's why a lot of like resentment or yeah. um, kind of like the mods are annoyed by that. They don't like getting that kind of feedback when it's so vague and just it's like fix PvP. That doesn't solve anything. Yeah, we have to Twitch chat. chat. Sounds like Twitch every chat. Every <laughs> Twitter post, every Reddit comment, Fred, every probably even. At RuneFest, the JMods talk to constant people about these updates, and they get the same shit, you know, nerf, dehide, crystal shields, everyone hates bulwarks, they shouldn't be the kind of feedback wilderness. that's really good. Right? Yeah, for and sure. it's repetitive, and we've been saying it for years. I mean, sure, a lot of people just say fix it, but there are so many threads and PvP. Like, I keep up on that Twitter all the time, and you got Abyss and Pure Spam giving ideas, and I bet Pure Spam, there's, you know, the... There's a Discord for all the partners and stuff for RuneScape content creators, and they talk to JMods directly. It's yeah. even on there. You know, there's ideas yeah, that I need to be implemented. Of suggestions, but, uh, and yeah, I was just talking to Ian. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm just saying, like, if they actually go in the wild, they'll see why these need to be implemented. Like, if you tell them, hey, take at like five mil gear and then try to kill somebody in Black Diad in a bulwark, you know, have them Yo, just right, try so that out. For like an hour every day and they'll get frustrated to the point where like yeah this isn't really fun at all you know don't have their jmod badges either because they got to get that experience of the shit talk too while the guy's typing with the bulwark eat my ass you noob you know they need the whole wildy uh -huh. experience to feel what it's like <laughs> to actually go in the wild and just not enjoy so it. i mean they they do have the bounty hunter thing they're working on right now so i don't i don't think that's what you're looking for necessarily but uh i'm down for any know, updates maybe that Maybe that that could be a good. I'm an update a, hoardy. A Just the throw them at me. I don't know if you are taking time for a PKing segment during this podcast, but I do have some. Suggestions. Yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it now. We were gonna do PvP. We can jump in while we're on okay. this topic. Yeah, sure. Sweet. Okay, cool. Uh, so I've been working on a blog. Um, I don't know if you guys agree with this, but I think the one of the best ways to rejuvenate the wilderness is to introduce new money makers that aren't just like incredibly high defense bosses that drop uniques. So one of the bigger problems with the wilderness and PVP and why there's so much hatred towards PVP is that there are uniques in the wilderness that people feel like they need to go and they feel forced is the word, right? Are you talking about Iron um, Man or just everybody? Iron Man, people that want pets, people that do clue scrolls, so that these people feel really forced to go into the wildy. So what all of my money makers that I've created, which I'll share with you in a moment, all, what they aim to achieve is to not make anything unique so that if you want to complete the game, if you're an Iron Man or whatever, um, not make anything unique such that you can still complete the game without having to enter the wilderness. And I, I'm not like proposing take out the dragon pickaxe from the tables or all the rings, like the treasonous ring or anything like that. Um, but I don't want to add to that problem of making people feel forced to enter the wildy. So what I offer is like just good money makers. That's that's pretty much all they are. And uh, I'll share with you guys a spreadsheet. Okay, it's, yeah, uh, I can put Google it up Doc. on the screen. Okay, cool. Uh, let me... But dude, Mint, like, yeah. to go back to what you just said about making J mods do this, I don't think it's necessary. In fact, I think it's a waste of time. I think, it's a, time. I I, I think it's a massive waste of time because they already know that stuff. Really? Like, I 
doubt yeah. it. I mean, and also, like, consider the fact that if you were to get a, a J mod to go into the world and experience PvP, it would more than likely be their first time, if not one of their first times, in PvP. So chances are they're going to enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're going to get the rush of it. Well, the thing is, the RuneScape's a huge game, and PvP is one of those unique aspects that no other game has. Full loot, PvP, point-to-click, and, you know, there's even a skill base and a meta and all this shit that is in the game. They should definitely experience it if they want to know all of RuneScape instead of just, uh, you know, the PvM and skilling aspect. They should definitely experience it, you know? They shouldn't be afraid, right? You know, they're not going to lose a ton, but just go out and see what dude, it's like. Dude, you know, you know the dilemma here... Is that I feel like half of the RuneScape community is like ever and I'm I'm I go towards this side, is that the game for me, the reason why it's appealing and I always loved it and still love it, but what caught my eye about it was that it stood out from other games because of the risk, right? Whether it be if Same. you died in PVM, you would lose your stuff, the wilderness and the fact that you could either gain or lose a lot from it. And I feel like half of the community are like the game should be incredibly hard and people should be forced into the wilderness and it should be PvP orientated. And then the other half is like, no, the game should be completely safe. You shouldn't have to go into PvP and you certainly shouldn't lose your stuff if you die to say a boss. So it's like, that's two huge fucking chunks to divide in the game. And it's yeah. at a point where I think that nothing will ever get done with the current voting system we have. True. It just fucking won't. Yep. And Agreed. eventually the game will literally just collapse on itself. And it'd be like, well, people are just so unhappy in general uh, and nothing's been done about it. Like something yeah. needs to, it needs to go one way or the other. You're right. And, and I don't think there's too much of a middle ground, but I might be wrong and I'm happy to be proven yeah, wrong. Yeah, I just uh, checked the... Uh, the you know camp Q strap looks pretty interesting well uh, before I mean... we sorry well before we get into that i just want to say one more thing here um uh when you were talking rexy about the death mechanics and how they were reverted so you don't lose anything do you think that's the reason why runescape's more soft now is because they just expect not to lose or risk anything ever yeah that's part of it uh, it's part, part of, of it for sure yeah 100 percent. that got me thinking and maybe that's a huge reason why people don't want to go in the wild because it's the only place you can actually lose things it used to be yeah, all of what i've been game. trying to say the whole well, time dude, yeah like what what man <laughs> like think about it like this when i first started playing runescape my first lesson learned was more or less the Dark Wizards, which I'm sure most of you learned. <laughs> they're which the, was they're like, the worst speakers. You, you might have spent a bit of while, a uh, bit of time in Lumbridge, and you may have played like an hour killing goblins, and that shit does not make you much money or much progress, but you make a little bit, and that's your first taste. And then you walk up to Varrock because people are like, you should go to Varrock or you just want to explore yourself. You die, and fuck, you just lost an hour's progress. Damn, this game is like difficult man like i can't yeah. take that route MMO. and it's like that that's a lesson learned right there whereas that lesson now is never being taught so that whole Yo, difficulty of the game just isn't that there, definitely is bred that sort of safety i net think in i landscape. think we are finally on the same wavelength of like the true understanding of the wilderness yeah i don't think it's necessarily the wilderness is a problem that needs to be changed the wilderness is always the wilderness you're right you know what i'm saying you're right it's always been the way it is, no matter what type of updates you necessarily do to it, as long as you don't as long as the core idea of going to the wilderness where you can be attacked by anyone exists, it'll always be the way it is. But the problem that has changed isn't even the wilderness, it's just the player's mindset. Exactly. Right? It's about the risk versus reward. We're conditioned ninety nine percent of the time to not take any, to not have any punishment when we die. But in but that one percent is in the wilderness. So people don't like that because it, it goes against all the things that they're yeah. used to. So the real question... Then, what, what really needs to happen is we need to bring back the proper, like, not 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 the you know, original death mechanics, but, but a way to make it feel punishing for people to die. And I, yeah. I, think, I think what it's going to come down to is probably just going to be scaled GP costs. Because right now you have like 100k for certain activities, but really it should be scaled, like... Depending on how much you have, and may maybe set it at yes. a max of one million GP if you die, yeah. And then for like lower level players with like lesser gear, obviously it'll be yes percentage based on whatever it is now, you're carrying. This right? is great. It, I think it's so, that's what it's going to come down to. It's so simple, man. Like if you look at Dead Man mode, why why yeah. was Dead Man mode successful? And in my eyes, I can tell you my personal opinion and takeaway from it. It was like 
shit, this is a punishing game mode. It's like you make all this progress and it can just be taken away from you like that and you lose your entire yeah, fucking I think it was fight. a bit extreme, but yeah. Yeah, it, it <laughs> was extreme. extreme. Yeah. And the, I, I personally <laughs> think the problem with Deadman mode was A, the fact that very little changed in it, and B, it wasn't that... What's the word? I wouldn't say it was fair. because well, you, you can you never really be, maintain what you build because at it, some point it yeah. ends. It, not know. not Unstable, that necessarily, but the, the fairness, yeah. the fairness of it for me, I didn't like, and it obviously yeah, yeah. put a lot of the people off. Where single, yeah, yeah, and no, not I'm not even just talking about that. I'm talking about like the basic scenario of you've just mm -hmm. made an account, and then there's a kid that barrages you when you're level fifty. I remember that and you're coming out of London. Yeah. Do, do you know what I mean? Up. So the yeah. fairness wasn't there, but I'm just saying what made demo mode so good was the excitement of the risk. It was like fuck, I can lose everything right now. You know, it's the risk is what makes RuneScape unique in that sense. I always yeah, said it. We like, definitely need that back. Now, uh, in, well, yeah. The main like, question is, I, do we make RuneScape more difficult now or do we want to grow a player base that steadily happy with just keeping better. everything? Well, that, the that's, earlier the better. That goes back to what I said earlier. It's like, do we make it a real safe game or do we make it a really risk game? Because half of the people want it, half of the people don't. Well, I think about it. There, like there's definitely a middle ground, right? Because it, like setting a limit, let's say you, you, you're a max player, you die, whatever, you lose a mil, right? That's like, we got to obviously not make it so crazy that you lose your entire shit. Like, you know, yeah. I feel like maybe a mil GP for maximum. No, I'm, Dude, I'm with you there. Uh, or something. It's uh, okay. I'll, I'll say this, right? Like, in terms of other games, and there was no other game that had that kind of mechanic, there was one game that I can think of. And this is when, when RuneScape 3 became a thing, EOC turned into RuneScape 3. I was working full-time at a factory, right? And I used to work with this dude. Um, I, I can't think what his name is. But anyways, he was a gamer as well. And he told me he played a game called EVE Online. And if you guys don't know what EVE Online oh, is, yeah, no, I know about it, it. I, it's I like it. It, it's like you're in it's space, crazy. you have a spaceship, yeah. you upgrade and stuff. And it was at the time when RuneScape 3 was a thing and I'd quit the game. And he described that game to me. And he described it and I was like, oh my god, I love the sound of it. And the reason I love the sound of it was because he told me that like you can kill people. He's like, you can fuck <laughs> people up in their ships and then you can loot all of their stuff. And then he told me like people warp to like dangerous locations in space and people camp at the warp zones and then you have like an anti warp like it's a be basically a tele a, a tele block but in the game it was like it stops you warping away so they can't just dash out and people would just camp there with their friends and just kill people in these spaceships get their spaceships for all of their loot and shit like I was like wow that sounds fucking awesome it has everything RuneScape used to be. But RuneScape is now RuneScape free, and it fucking sucks. And now we're uh, like repeating me, that cycle, right? It's like risk versus reward, fun yeah, versus we, gameplay. We risk. I don't think we need all the risks in the world like we used to, but we need some risk. Because like most bosses in this game, you die, you don't lose anything. Not even 100k, right? Doesn't It hurts It hurts to lose something. Like 4k definitely hurts a bit, but like honestly, 100k is still, you know, a tip of the iceberg, but you know. Like we need we need a bit more risk back into the game. That's for sure. Yeah, I think, I think it should be percentage of your bank. Yeah, 100%. yeah, up to I think up to like a mil or something. That was, that's a, that's an awesome gold sink. Yeah, uh, yeah. not that we don't already have enough gold sinks, but I don't the see more the, the more the better. Many, I mean, yeah. have you seen the amount of gargo alts that the fucking run <laughs> every world? Like, let's be real, with this point yeah. of GP in this game. I mean, yeah. and that always leads me. I can't remember if it was Kemp I was talking to or if it was pure spam at Runefest, but I was like. The main problem with PvP back in the day with the EP system was that like most of the money in game was coming in through PvP because it was by far the best money maker. You fire striked your friend AFK for two hours, you got 100 EP, you killed each other for risk. You yeah, it was abusable. How it was. As fuck. Right, it was very abusable. But I said to him, I said like now that we have all of these taxes, whether it be the grand exchange tax or whether it be um, uh, staking, and obviously all of the money sinks we have, I was like, do you really think that at this point in the game? That would be sorry, guys. That would be like a big issue for the game. Yeah, no, I think it would, it would be bring a big too issue. much money in. But that, like, would I mean, it? Just would activity. it? I'm yeah. saying the activity itself would be <laughs> a big issue a because <laughs> it's it's abusable. You know, just yeah, like how people is, are abusing gargoyles and stuff. It's yeah, you know, but it's I'm I'm saying the main problem yeah. with it back in the day, like if you want to make PvP good. Um, again, I mean that's one problem. The other. The other problem was it kept bringing stuff like DFSs and Dragon Fall Helms and shit, and that just crashed yeah, the price dude. of all those things. Well, when I say this stuff, I really don't yeah. mean it in the sense of just bring it back yeah. how it was. I don't no, think yeah, that yeah, any, yeah. I really don't think that anything or if many things should be brought back from RuneScape 3 or EOC at the time. I, I think it should be. I mean, yeah, yeah. If, you're, if you're talking about the nature of alkables, I mean, there's plenty of places that give you alkables. I mean, if you add another place that give you more alkables, I mean, 
mm. you know, as long as there's enough ghost things to. But to right, no, I'm giving right. I'm giving you my PvP perspective as somebody yeah. who literally played through every fucking era of PvP that RuneScape's ever had, whether it be the old wilderness, bounty hunter craters, PvP worlds, like everything. Even when they brought out that shitty RuneScape free version of bounty hunters, I don't even know what it was called, but like all of that stuff. I'm talking Clan Wars PKing when that was like met at the time because all the noobs yeah. went in there. I made bank in there. I've done literally every version of PvP you can imagine in this game. And I'm telling you right now, some of the funnest times I ever had in RuneScape PvP was being able to roam around the entire map of RuneScape, whether it be Red Chin Chompers, some random place in fucking Birthright, and being able to kill people and get loot off them, even if they risked very little. That shit was the funnest. And the main problem with it was the fact that it brought so much gold into the game. And at the time, there were no money sinks. That's why so it's like, I don't like PvP, PvP worlds. Thing right you there. know what I mean? Because they don't have that kind of adventurous aspect for PvP no, worlds. No, they, they just they don't. You just camp a hot spot. It's not yeah, even I why mean, you even I have feel that. Like, so I'm, I agree with you. It'd be like nice the, to have some. I feel like we're... I feel like we're a bit off topic. Oh yeah, though. I was gonna say let's but, cut um, back to Kemp, yeah. but Rakes he's having yeah, a like, moment. I, I, like, I like Kemp's <laughs> idea though. I, I do like Kemp's idea of like this cavern where. Well, let's have Kemp read out the um, read out his stuff. updates yeah. here. Oh, three words. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so um, Kemp snoozes, man. It's yeah, basically a say. um wilderness. It's just like kind of like Rev Caves, but it extends from the very bottom, most southern part of the wilderness, to the most northern. And it's just this cavern with loads of different activities at the end of each branch of the cavern. So it um, spans out across the wilderness and it's underground. Like an ant colony, uh, kind and, of? Like uh, a little path? Uh, like, that's 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 path. That, like that it's before. Chasms, right? That's what they used to call it. I think that's what you've named it, Kemp. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that, well, no, I've, I've named it Wilderness Caverns. But... Oh, okay. Chaos Tunnels. Back yeah, oh, yeah, it's Chaos Tunnels. Where you could burst the um, mummies. They were mummies, right? I actually don't yeah. remember anything yeah, about that, but yeah. Ian was saying he was drawing some comparisons. Would as it well. have the best yeah, XP yeah, per hour for bursting in there? Because I think that'd be kind of well, spicy for the while. Let him, just... let, let him get to it, man, because I, re I heard this idea already and I love it. Okay. So, Ken, go ahead, man. Yeah, so, so there, there are a few activities that I've planned out so far. Uh, I worked on this like a year ago and made some things, um, and then only recently got back into it with a few new ideas that I've come up with in the meantime. And uh, there's one idea. I'll just go over this very briefly. Uh, the second activity, which is like after the first activity, which is just an introduction, uh, is like wilderness challenges. So wilderness clue scrolls, basically. Ooh. So um, imagine the reaction to that by the PVMers. But <laughs> no. the rewards are actually really good. Um, and sorry, boys. <laughs> the priority is to make people risk something as they do these various activities in the wildy, right? So. Uh, one example of a clue step that you could get is this guy that's asking you to do this clue scroll. He needs supplies to take on the monsters in the wilderness. So he says, for example, I need a full set of Barrow's armor. I need a full revenant bracelet. I need 50 rune ores, um, stuff like that. So that, those are called supply clues. And there are like three other types of clues as well. So just a brief of the, um, the wildy clues there. Uh, and then num activity number three is the master level alchemy machine, which is basically just a machine that you put in your items. And obviously you're in the wilderness. So every alchemy that you bring in with you, you're risking it pretty, you know, except for three, obviously. Um, and then it, it increases the amount of GP that it gives you by 22.5% over what high alk does. So it, it's called the Master Level Alchemy Machine. I currently have this put in level 19 Wilderness. But you don't so get XP for it, I'm guessing, right? You don't get any XP. It has no requirements. Um, but yeah, it is like on par. So what I think the Wilderness should have, it should have the best money makers in the game. But that will never satisfy PVMers. They, they will not enjoy They wouldn't like that. You know, They don't want it to be better than TOB because they want to feel like they're being the most efficient. Um, Obviously, with you know a really good money maker comes high risk if it's in the wilderness. So, in order to get the best GP per hour to stay here for like an entire hour, you need to bring literally sixty mil worth of alkables into the wildy in order to run it for that full hour. And then you get a, obviously a twenty two point five percent increase in GP, um, which is like pretty similar to TOB rates. But that assumes number one, you are being like completely efficient. 
Number two, you don't die at all. And number three, like it does, it excludes banking time and all that. Well, yeah, you also have to remember TOB prices are not constant too. So it's it's gradually going down a bit. Whereas I think what you're going for is const like uh, you know physical GP that can't lose value. Like well, not like not like real value, but like nominal value you can't lose it because mm -hmm. I'm on it's, the same page. Yeah, dude, I'm yeah. loving all these ideas, man. I mean. So, I so mean, what's I don't your mind conclusion them. on I that, Rice? I don't, I don't mind them. Um, I mean, I think it's fine for uh, for there to be, you know, good money makers in, in the wilderness because, you know, you, you did have a good point where some of the uniques were kind of forced in there and people didn't f really feel like it was an option for them to skip. Rather, it was forced. So, yeah, I mean, none of these are forcing, technically forcing people to want to go do this. So it's still fine with me. How would you yeah, um, feel if you... I think the I'm biggest sorry, issue would be uh, figuring out how much GP per hour and stuff like that because, you know, some of these are like guaranteed money makers, right? So so we got to, I guess, be careful. Well, I mean, like, like as in, like, for example, you out something and you get X back. It's always that amount. That's what I mean by guaranteed. As in, so I think you guys have to probably be really careful figuring that stuff out. I mean, there's obviously the risk, right? You never know when you get PK'd and stuff, but... Yeah, yeah. I, I really like that idea of Ken, by the way. I but it can like be abusable, be, you know what I mean? If it's not if enough this people... came into the game... You know, it could be ironed out, but it's great. I, it's I, I would have so much stuff to do. I would have so much fun camping these areas or doing the clues. <laughs> and personally, um, Rakes, he's talking about the mummies. I don't know. I didn't play that far. I mean, I played, yeah, but no, I quit but it wasn't early in on. the wilderness. Yeah, but that was safe. Imagine that if there was safe. also an area where you could get the best chinning and barraging XP in the wild, Right. You know how fucking That's, awesome that would be? Because then you could get... That would never, ever pass. Which is ridiculous, because yeah, no. you could easily well, no, die doing that. No, I mean... Um, I disagree, because the money... The wilderness was always about the money. It, it's, not, it's not about yeah, giving it the best be experience. It should be about the money. And that's why I really enjoy the Chaos yeah. Altar, how it stands right now. It saves you a bone. So it literally just saves you money. It doesn't increase your XP rates at all. It's just that it saves you well, money. Picture yeah. like for peers and stuff, they can go in the wild and burst and barrage with the aspect of also getting PK'd so they don't have to unlock Monkey Madness to get that defense XP or play the weird yeah. and weird. It would give them another area to actually go and do that, which would be a hot spot. And I doubt they could really yeah, do it for too awesome. long. Just give me, give me one sec. I'll get to that in a sec. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. The only trouble with that is that there are, like, there are multiple places you can burst that are already the best in-game for bursting and the reason they're the best in-game for bursting or barraging is because there's only so many targets you can hit with those spells so it's like monkey madness 2 there's like two or three times as many monkeys there that you can actually hit at one time so we already have that but yeah kemp i know what you're about to say man hit them with it dude i love this idea yeah so i finally figured out what npc i want to represent this um and i figured out it should be revenant dwarves which are a new monster. They're like maniacal monkeys, but um, yeah, they can be stacked in the wilderness and they, I don't want to read this entire thing out, but um, basically they drop runes so you can be self-sufficient uh, as you're barraging them. They are revenants, so they share, they slightly share the same drop table with uh, other revenants, except that they don't drop like the new, the weapons, like they don't drop the cross or the Amaran Scepter of Agora's Chain Mace. Um, and a Ring of Wealth imbued, if this update were to go through, I would propose that it picks up runes so that you can like not have to worry about uh, picking up all the runes from the dwarves and they just fill in your inventory already. So in order to like go here and start bursting or barraging, you have to bring quite a sizable chunk of runes with you to like start doing that. So you're going to be, while traveling there, you're going to be risking quite a bit of money. Uh, you're going to be, like, as you're barraging there you're going to be getting all these different loots lots of alcables lots of um just stuff that revenants drop lots of runes as well you'll be only slightly increasing your rune stack that you brought with you uh, i made it i already balanced it out so that you don't get like a massive surplus of blood souls deaths chaos runes so you'll only yeah. be profiting a little bit on those and then you'll be getting some revenant drops here and there as well um so yeah this is the kind of maniacal monkeys in the wilderness concept that I created. And it's not the best XP rates in the game because I don't believe in that. I just believe that like it'd be cool to have like a somewhat sustainable in terms of money 
Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. The yeah. money focus theme is fine with me. I, I like that. I, I don't know if I'm 100% but on board with like having the runes pop up. Maybe. might Because people might not go if that doesn't work. But personally, it'd be nicer if they just risked whatever they had on them without refilling their shit. Uh, that's a pretty solid I mean, idea. Especially because the revs, you could have like an amulet. Get that I mean, the XP. risk is already the rev drops, though. Because if you kill someone after being there for a while, they're, they're going to have a ton of rev drops that maybe mm-hmm. depending yeah. on the drop table yeah so, but that's that's yeah, why i said well, he did say it was going to be like revs yeah that's why i said like lines, thinking so. about it it, yeah. it probably wouldn't pass unless that was the case but well, yeah, yeah it's yeah. um 70 of the drop table is the standard revenant drop table yeah, so it's I'll, basically i'll be honest though none of this stuff that that kept me saying will pass if it's pulled <laughs> but but if jagex says fuck okay. that shit let's put it in anyways then it's fine you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. I still. I mean, it's I, good. I, like, already, I don't. I don't think these are bad ideas at all. It's just obviously the polling system is so biased that yeah. those these things aren't going to pass. But hey, you know, Jagex might. You know, they've done some stuff without polls before. I mean, you know, they they could do it again if they want to. The, I, I have think a that's cousin, what they're leaning towards. I have a cousin that. that um, he accidentally yeah. teleported to the wilderness with the ancient spell book. He like teleported to Gorok or Anakala or something. I think it was Gorok actually. And uh, he died to a PKR that was waiting there, and he <laughs> lost like forty-five mil. Ever since then, he's voted no to every PVP poll. Yeah, he's yeah, like one of those yeah. guys. So uh, I'm gonna ask him what he thinks about these ideas, uh, because he's like the person that we, you know, he's the opposite of us. Basically, I don't want to talk he's shit about my cousin. <laughs> we but... despise him <laughs> uh, a little yeah. bit, a little bit. So uh-huh. I have like that resource, like that, like I can ask him if what he thinks about these ideas. Um, I think I these hope are fine just... ideas. I think these are fine ideas, and I don't PK. Firstly, these I'm are these ideas get me excited, but I still stand on the there needs to be some changes with the balancing, right? Because you could bring an, a lot of awesome ideas into the game, but if you could still box monsters or just tank twenty fucking barrages with black dehyde or tank with a bulwark. Uh, at the end of the day, you're still going to hit that kind of wall where it's like, wow, it was fun, but this is bullshit. You know? Mm-hmm. I okay, think they are. Well, I think those are such separate issues. Your issue is that, you well, don't want all players pooping up on you, you know? Yeah, like that's that's the general issue of people trying to box and stuff. I mean, well, it, otherwise. That's such a dumb easy. mechanic, though, that you can box a monster to get away from players, you know? Like maybe if you could box for like a minute, but for like 10 minutes straight or X log, that's ridiculous. Ridiculous to me. Mm. Yeah. Well, these are really, these are almost like quality of life issues that you have, dude. Like, I agree that they suck, but it should just be a case of we've already seen that that mechanic you're talking about has been fixed. Like in Deadman mode, you could only box something for a certain amount of time before it kicked you off and you're able to be attacked. I don't understand why that isn't just a quality of life thing. And Jagex are just like, okay, we're changing this this week. So if you're boxing an NPC and you're doing like no damage at all, People can attack you after like 30 seconds or after so many zeros you've hit. Like, I'm it's such that. a basic silly thing. I actually had a solid yeah, idea yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, that could be yeah. implemented. Or um, also, say the first two seconds you attack a monster, someone can PJ you off. But only the first two seconds. Yeah. But these are, th- this is a separate issue though. Like objectively, I mean, like ba- just looking at these these ideas themselves and not talking about these other integrity. Oh, you're, you're right. These ideas are like, fucking godly. Fine. I think they're fine, dude. They're, you know, but I'm just saying they, if there's we... a lot of things taken into consideration here, you know, like balancing and making a not best, uh, best XP in the game, make it, you know, very focused on the money aspect. I think those are all great ideas. But yeah, yeah, it's fine. I mean, the biggest issue is just passing it. Going going back so to the to dumb boat analogy that I made. All right, these updates are amazing, and they'd add like a whole section to the boat. But if you don't patch that bitch up, it's not going to swim. You know, that's that's yeah, how yeah. I, I see mean, it. That's, yeah, yeah. But these yeah, are solid. Sure. I'd I mean, be very that's, that's a that's an issue that impacts all of wilderness. Yeah. No, I mean not not this specifically. Right? I agree. This is a just... entire wilderness thing. So. Yeah, and for the last activity that I've oh, there's um, another one, sweet. <laughs> planned out yeah just one more it's i don't know i'm kind of iffy on this one i could understand if you guys are a little like respond a little bit more negatively uh it's basically a fenced off area that you access by like unlocking a door with a laren's key or paying 100k and inside this area is our six allotments tree tree patches and you could just plant trees here and um once you harvest the trees you don't get any farming xp Instead, you are rewarded with 
an 80% chance of getting the um, the same seed back and a 40% chance of getting a second, a 20% uh, chance of getting a third, 10% of getting a fourth, and so on. So it's like, you basically, if you plant six magic saplings here, on average, you're going to get about nine magic seeds in return. I um, like that. That's cool, man. You had me with the yeah, Laird's key. Yeah. And you had me with the door. And I'm like, this, look, this sounds cool. And then farming in the wild with trees? That's a cool idea, but I don't know if it would be the biggest thing in the wilderness. I mean... I mean, think well, it, about the money. It's more of a passive thing, yeah. Passive? It's like Maybe it was like a part of be. it. Maybe if there was like a, a huge resource area right through the door and that was just like a part of it. But I think if it was the main thing to use a Laren's key on, I'm not sure. Well, I, it's just a, it's a weird concept because like you're planting a seed and you're getting seeds back. Yeah, and no XP. But that's how know. trees yeah, work true. in the real world. That's true. Yeah, and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's yeah. just money. <laughs> I don't think I don't it's know. that It's weird. just weird because like <laughs> you plant a seed in this game, you just cut the tree down, right? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah it's yeah. called it's called benevolent soil, is what it's called. That's what I call that. What, what if you make like... it so that you have to chop the tree and then you get the seed back? Because that way it like makes sense. It stay like you have to be there for longer. Is that it? I guess. I mean, you just cut the tree, right? However long it takes to cut the tree. Yeah, down. but what what about every time that you do it, you have to re rake all three waves of weeds. That keeps you there for a while. <laughs> oh my god! No, I mean, this is this was always cutting, cutting a whole magic tree down takes a while sometimes. What, sure. Yeah, what if it's like a fixed amount? You gotta cut like ten logs guaranteed before you you know it like gives you the shit. I don't know. Personally, you have an idea. It just needs right, more, it right? Machine. It just needs a little more to it, but it's a pretty solid like this could be the great pathway to like a resource area too, and you just delete the regular one because that people it's fucking dead. Yeah, that one's yeah. Dude, that one's you can gross, literally like. log out by the time they even enter the door. I mean <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying like Looking at it wise, it just feels so out of place. I'm like, bro, it's a fucking fenced in square with random. It's like that ghetto ass school, you know? Yeah. It's just fucking. It, it is, it is silly when you. <laughs> I'm think like, bro, like... this does not fit in the game, like I, at all. I like the it, idea that a Laren's key natural. accesses different content in the wild, though. That's a really yeah. cool idea. Um, that is really cool. Now, I have, I have an idea on top of this that since we're talking about the resource area, what if in certain hot spots, right? Say the Laren's chest, the resource area, another area that I haven't thought of right now. What if it has dead man mode mechanics to where you can't log out right away? So you have to face tank out of that area, right? You're turning in Laren's keys, maybe there's risk, you get slapped. You can't just instant log. I don't know if that's possible. I don't know like, either, but might be an engine thing, but whatever. I'm not sure. Uh, the thing is, though, they Ooh. made it so that you could teleport right away in safe zones on demo mode. So I feel like if they did that with the log, I'm not sure if they could do the logout timer, but they might be able to because those mechanics are kind of timers already in play. Thing. Dude, there's so much they could do with this. Like with the Lauren's keys, you can trade them, can't you? Right. So imagine. No. No. <laughs> wrong. No. Wait, can you no. not? Well, you can PK them though, right? You them, right? Yeah, you can PK them. them. Ah, okay. Well, I was just thinking, like. If they were to put that into the game, I think the Lauren's chest would just be like people would probably still loot it, but not as much. But imagine if they put like a, a drop rate for I don't know, it could be one in a hundred, or it could be way more. Where it's like you can get a master Lauren's key, which is tradable and is worth a significant amount of money. So you could go inside of the magic tree resource area as much as you want, but the key is always dropped on death, and it would have like a significant value because. You know, you can make a shed ton of money off. That's of a it. fatty idea, right? I like it. I like it. Like man. they could add so much to this and make the Lawrence chest like even more appealing. Thing is, know? though, like if you can just instant log out, like the one-click teleports have been an addis in a way. If you can just, you know, sit there with your Adderall ass body, just like all shaking and shit, just click, gone. Right? It's so easy to escape. That's what I'm saying. If there was like a 10 second timer, 5 it's, second. Oh wait, yeah, there is. Yeah, they can do that. They can do that easily. That would be, Ooh, that'd be nice. It's the wildy. It would, um, it would, uh, what was it called? Probably make the more area more active, more risk versus reward, and it'll actually be rewarding to go out. Because a lot of times I'm like, do I even want to PK here? They're just going to instantly teleport when they see me. You know? That'd be, that'd be really cool. Have you encountered that before where they log out when you're there? Oh, log out, teleport, they see a white dot, uh, third-party clients can see people, you know, uh, even right. when they're close. It's crazy the amount of shit people can get away with. You have to catch them off guard to kill them, and then you gotta, you know, actually hit the TV 
which is super rare. <laughs> Cause I'll be imbue hearted, max mage, boop, 10k D hide splash four times in a row. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why it's like PVMers have so much in the wild as terms of tanks and get away and and PKs are just kind of sat there like I better hit this TV or the kill's gone. So. You're going to be camping with your ring of stone, my friends. Yeah. <laughs> Even if they see a white dot, though. You know, it doesn't like. get rid of the white dot minimap. Third Age Van Braces as well. Good times. Yeah. That'd be really cool. But yeah, I, I like all of these ideas, and they can definitely be built on, like, quite a lot. Solid. Every single one Fucking of them. Fucking solid, man. Like, I, I think with the Revenant Dwarfs, like, it fits in with the lore of the wilderness. And not yeah. only that, I can already see, like, the meta for it, which is pretty much... Free items that give magic percent damage, and the rest would be like monk Sal. robes that you take. Oh, no. Yeah, it it, it could oh, be yeah, salve, yeah. It, it could be really good, and also yes, yeah, salve. So it'd be better than demonic gorillas because they're dead. Do you take a salve to uh, throw chins in monkey madness one tunnels? Yeah, my, and yeah, yeah, because they're skeleton monkeys. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I can see the metas for it already. And like, what the you fuck? Get, you get people that are like brain dead that would take like code eyes and think they're safe. Uh, bursting the uh, the revenant dwarfs, and then all of a sudden you get kids like underneath logging in and skull tricking them and stuff. Right, so are you smelling like, your so hand? Cool. No, no, I'm just scratching my my fish ring. Oh, you ran into one. One. Who's that? Who is it? Is that the real? Sorry, I don't really know. That's why I reacted like that earlier. Chunk man. I don't even know who that is. is that chunk that's the or one. Something? No, <laughs> that's, that's the, the one chunk that series. Made, like, two that's videos. The... Oh, it's not him. I don't think it's him. You never know. Right, boys. Dude, I look, I don't know how long this podcast's going on for, but we need to do a round two for this because I feel like we've like we've touched the tip of the iceberg and we could talk about this shit for days. Should we but, not yeah. touch Mortania just a little touch? Should we I I we we can touch it, but I think we should wrap up after touch this. It, well, I mean we, can talk, we should talk about the RuneFest though very briefly. Some of the updates that came out, you know? Well, not okay. coming out. All right, pick that. one or Hopefully the other. Here. All right, RuneFest or Mortania. What are we talking about? That they're both that that's a RuneFest announcement. Okay, you all know right, what? Get, I wasn't there the whole time, Rice. All right. <laughs> uh, they're, they're all RuneFest announcements. All right, lead, lead the way. Let's get for it. Lead the way. I mean, okay, so they're gonna expand on Mauritania some more. So uh, you know, settle content right there. And yep. they're gonna bring out a new quest to continue the storyline from you know where they left off. It looks off like Martin, two you know? quests. Oh no, never mind, you're right. No, Sorry. it's one quest. That's just a requirement. All right, so there's a quest. I'm not exactly sure what's going to be the rewards for that, but you know, I think they'll talk about it more later. And then uh so it's a new place, right? A new city. We already had this in uh the original RuneScape when they expanded up, but it's going to be a different version of getting to the same place. And also there's going to be a new boss, the uh, Ashihana boss. Uh, it's going to be like similar to court where a bunch of people are going to, you know, go and kill it. Yeah. Is that it right um, there? We don't, the we don't know much bastard. about it, to be honest. Other than that, they don't. That you know, we don't have sick, to work it out yet. Yeah, it's right here. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's it's a new boss, and it's probably gonna be you know pretty high level boss. But that's all we know. You want me to read Dude, the lore? I, <laughs> man, I, do you know? I, I was sat ahead, I was want. sat next to Kemp when that was announced, and I remember just looking at him, and I know exactly what I said, right? I don't have a problem with them bringing out more Tanya content. It's a smart move, whether or not, and we don't really know, it's all speculation, if it's anything to do with um, settled series. Obviously, he's great advertisement for the game, so it could be. And I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with is when they announced this boss, it was just like, yeah, we're going to put this boss into the game, which is similar to Corporal Beast, and we're going to let you decide what the rewards are. It's mm -hmm. like, fuck, man. I, I I turned to Kemp and I was like, really? <laughs> like, they're going to pull a fucking boss and just be like, you guys are deciding what the drops are? I would like are? five That's noted AGSs. Or... <laughs> Do you know what I mean, though? It's just like, if you're going to think of something, like, already have in mind what that boss is going to drop. I re that really, like, rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, you know that. why they're saying it like that? Because they don't want to waste time developing it and then have the polling system screw them over. Pretty get much rid it. of the polling system, man. God damn. Yep, that's what I'm saying, dude. But, I mean, or just turn into a feedback. So, Rakesy, like do you? Like we've always talked about. Do you think they're these yeah. updates are coming in the game because they like settled series, or do the artists really just like drawing vampires? I'm I'm getting a real. I mean, I mean you know, 50, emo 50, bro, hint honestly. right here. They really like drawing I, I, this shit up, man. <laughs> I, I honestly, guy. I don't have a problem with either of those, man. It's yeah. like, if it is because of Settled, great. The guy advertises the game on such a big level. You can't even be jealous at this point. It's like, the dude, is, dude is helping the game stay alive. 
And fuck it, if they want to put content in the game specifically for him, we don't know if that's the truth or not. I don't really care. I mean, I'm sure there's there's a partial reason. Yeah, you know I mean? uh, yeah. I mean, it makes yeah, sense. It's, it's, deal, it's smart to do it. I just have a big problem with them saying we're releasing a boss which is on par with Corporal Beast, and we have no fucking idea what the drops are going to be. Like that was such a cop out, dude. I, I said that. Yeah, again, I mean, me. I dude, like, it's uh, you can't blame them because we we we've backed them we've all backed ourselves into a corner with the polling system so i mean who do we blame then we gotta blame we blame all of us it's, uh, it's a community the thing, community's bro. dumb right i blame the people yeah. that listen to the community when they see all this shit on reddit they're like these, nah, these are it's, the people it's everybody's the fault oh, bro. Dude. Yeah, i'm I mean, gonna i'm gonna take issue. i'm gonna take a real hippie stance here and say yeah, it's, it's a, time it's time that we stop blaming yeah okay? no, it's, it's, it's we stop fault, blaming and we start gaming and we stop. All right, I'm ending. I'm ending this. Now. Yeah, no, I mean, look, eventually, eventually the whole point system thing need, needs to be addressed because, no. you know what I mean? Like, we finally yeah. got the whole hidden results, which is great. Stop but blaming, honestly, the next start step, gaming. Breaks, you, you know, right. The next step, though, is turning into a survey. A lot of into, a lot of J mods are quitting. All. And I think that's because I mean, we're just also, shitting them up. Right. But. That, I could talk about that all day, but I'll quickly say this. I spoke to a J mod. I can't remember which J mod it was. He was at RuneFest. And I think, Kev, you're with me like a lot of these times. I, what was the J mod yeah. I was talking to? Who was it? Well, I, I don't know. It depends what you're going to say, whether or not I want to talk. We were literally getting burritos at the time. And yeah. Was there. Mod, well, what are you going to say? Because I don't right. want to Okay. So I was stood there and I was like, I've seen loads of shit recently, controversy saying all of these J mods are leaving, blah, 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 blah. And I literally said to him, I was like, people are so fucking stupid. I was yeah. like, I was like, back in the day when you guys, as a company, when Jagex wasn't so open as they are now to like, everybody sure. knows every J mod. I was like, Dude, back when it was pre OC and before then, J mods probably left like every yeah. month, but we never even fucking heard about it. Yeah, no, it. that's true. You know? It's true. It's just here's here's the deal. It's just that J mods are leaving, except more and more of them are open to tell you that they're quitting. It's not I mean, that's that's all it is. Because yeah. there's you, you can't tell me that ten J mods leaving one year is actually a, a surprise. It's not. Because I'm sure out of the hundreds of staffs, it's always happens. Have, yeah, every year there's got to be at least probably 10, 20 people yeah. leaving. But they're not telling you. They haven't been telling you, but but it's been getting really uh It's annoying. It's like trending, you know, it's, it's trending like now that people, people want to yeah, tell you. That people like really feeding leaving. into this bullshit. It's like, yeah. man, just take your shit to Reddit so I don't have to fucking see yeah. it. It's like that's been happening for years. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Yeah, personally. No, the only difference is I might be wrong, yeah, but like they've, it has literally, JMods have been leaving for years. Since the game first came out, you know, it's like it's not a big deal. It just seems it because they announced that they're leaving because we know who they are. All right, let's wrap it up, yeah. anyways. Yo, Kemp, where can the people find you? Also, Kemp is very close to a hundred thousand subscribers, and for a RuneScape channel, we need Woo! to get as many RuneScapers who make YouTube content to 100k subs. Put us on the map. Where can people find you, Kemp? YouTube.com forward slash KempQ. Campus Q. And just, yeah. just just so you guys know, he is currently sat at 98.9k subscribers. We have what like four thousand subs here. So if like one in every four of you went and subscribed right now, you'd hit hundred K. Hell yeah. they're probably he already give us, when he hits hundred K. When he hits hundred K, he's gonna give us the biggest show oh, for our help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I promise, uh, you know. I'll cut up the plaque and send it to each of you for my uh, you. appreciation. Yeah, appreciate yeah, give me give me one the cubic you know, centimeters worth. <laughs> Hell yeah. Beautiful. Wow, thank you very much for coming on, man. We love you, and we're definitely going to have to have you on again because your PvP ideas were probably some of the best, yeah, in my man. opinion, that we've had. They were actually really good. I really liked hey, hearing them. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I'd love to come on again. So thank you guys for having me.